Windows 7 has now reached its end of life. So a couple of days ago, Windows 7, the support for it, has officially ended. No longer is Microsoft going to support Windows 7 going forward. But there are millions and millions of users out there that still run Windows 7, despite the fact that that operating system now is more than a decade old. The very first version of Windows 7 came out way back in 2009. In that 11 or 12 years since that release, we've had two major versions of Windows come out, you know, 8 and 10. But I think it is clear that most of the people that are running Windows 7 still after all this time, they have no intention of ever upgrading to Windows 10. And I don't blame them. Windows 10 is buggy. Its updates have been known to break people's machines, wreck people's machines. And Windows 10 is actually known to be full of spyware that is installed by default by Microsoft. But there is another upgrade path for those people that are still on Windows 7 besides Windows 10. You can upgrade to Linux. Upgrading from Windows 7 to Linux is very, very easy. If you can answer just a handful of questions and click a mouse, then you can install most of the major Linux distributions out there. You can even try out Linux before you install it. All you need to do is burn the ISO, the ISO image, of your chosen Linux distribution to a USB stick, and you can try it out in a live environment. Don't worry if that sounds difficult. I promise you it is super easy to do this. For most users, Linux will work out of the box with all of your hardware. You may need to install some hardware drivers, but most of the major Linux distributions these days make this as easy as just clicking a button. In Ubuntu, for example, during the installation process, you are asked if you want to install third-party drivers and codecs. During the installation, I give you a hint, you should answer yes to that question. Most typical desktop PC users spend most of their time in the web browser. That's what most of us do these days. We spend about 99% of our time, right, in the web browser, browsing the web. Well, the great thing is most of your major web browsers that are available in Windows are also available in Linux, including Chrome, Firefox, Opera, and Vivaldi. And all of your web apps and your web services that you've been used to and using in Windows, they're going to work just fine in Linux. Your social media sites like Facebook and Twitter, they work fine in Linux. And streaming services such as Netflix and Hulu, they also work in Linux. One of the great things about Linux is it will save you money, especially in regards to hardware costs, computer costs, because with each new version of Windows, each new version that Microsoft releases, the system requirements of Windows also increases. You need a better computer with a better processor with even more RAM. Ah, but Linux is much lighter on resources than Windows, and it should work on any machine purchased probably in the last decade. If you have equipment older than that, though, don't worry. There are specialty Linux distros out there that are designed to run on that really ancient hardware, hardware that you could never get Windows to install on. The best part about Linux, though, is that Linux is free and open source software. Now, when we talk about free... We're talking about freedom. You, the user, have the right, the freedom, to use, copy, study, change that software in any way you see fit. When we talk about open source, what we're talking about is really transparency. We're talking about transparency here. The source code, it's out there in the public. It is openly shared so that anyone can inspect the code, discover, and Fix vulnerabilities, contribute to the overall improvement of that software project. Now, this is in stark contrast to what proprietary software companies like Microsoft do with their software, where their software is often licensed under these really restrictive licenses, and the source code is hidden away from the user. You're not allowed to inspect that code. Why? Well, often it's to hide the malicious activities of the proprietor of that software. One confusing aspect of Linux is that due to the free and open source nature of it, we have hundreds of Linux distributions out there to choose from. Fret not, though. There are plenty of tools out there to help you make the right choice for you. There are a lot of websites out there that help you pick a Linux distribution based on the way you answer a few questions. But I will give you my recommendation. I suggest brand new Linux users start with Ubuntu. 
Ubuntu is easily the most popular Linux distribution out there. It's also one of the easiest to install and to use. If for some reason Ubuntu does not work for you though, there are plenty of other new user-friendly distros out there. Linux Mint, Elementary, MX Linux, just to name three. Once you download the ISO for Ubuntu and burn it to a USB stick, all you need to do is plug in that USB stick to your computer and reboot. Go through the installation process. The Ubuntu installer is very simple. You create a username, a password, and you click OK three or four times, and you're done. The installation process for Ubuntu takes maybe 10 minutes on most machines. Now, for you guys that are contemplating maybe making the switch from Windows over to Linux, I certainly would not begrudge anyone for not wanting to immediately format their drive and wipe out their Windows installation. I get it. Thankfully, though, you can install Linux alongside Windows. It's what we call dual booting. This allows you to log in to either Linux or Windows when you boot up your machine. So if for some reason you must get back into your Windows installation, it's not a problem. You just simply reboot your computer and you choose Windows instead of Linux on boot up. Windows 7 is no longer supported by Microsoft and it is not recommended that you guys still run Windows 7 as your operating system. Because it's unsupported, to put it bluntly, it is not safe to use. So if upgrading your Windows 7 installation to Windows 10 is out of the question, then why don't you choose an even better upgrade path? Why don't you choose Linux? With Linux, you will have an attractive, secure, privacy-respecting, and freedom-loving operating system that may just change the way you think about your desktop computing experience. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the patrons of the channel, all these names you guys are seeing on the screen right now. These are the supporters of my work over on Patreon. Without these guys, this show wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.